at 7.01 p.m. First item is a uh, roll call. Item two, roll call. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Hall. Present. Commissioner Street. Here. Vice Mayor Butler. Present. Mayor Anderson. Present. Item number three is prayer and pledge. Vice Mayor Butler, would you say the prayer for us? Lord, we're meeting today to cook matters of business. Get our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought and speech. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activities so that our affairs may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On item number four, I'd like to defer item B and C to the, I believe it's March 2nd, BOC meeting. We had a little wording issues on the website and the agenda, so we will be deferring those so we can get those corrected. Mayor, so, point of order. I think that after having stated that, the correct motion would be to approve the agenda without items 11, B, C, and then if the, if the board approves uh, the agenda without those items, that will accomplish what you want to accomplish there. Okay. So moved. Second. I have a first and a second. Any discussion on that? Mayor, if I could, just for clarification for the public, the, the wording on the agenda and the website and like some of the applications that the people filled out was for the park commission and it was really the park and landscape board. So we're gonna get some things clarified where it's all uh, how it's supposed to be and we'll have it back on the next agenda. And that will be dated, uh, the agenda dated March 2nd, 2023. Any other discussion or questions on that? All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Hall. Aye. Commissioner Street. Aye. Vice Mayor Butler. Aye. Mayor Anderson. Aye. Item, item number six, citizens comments. There are none tonight. Thank you. Item number seven, public announcements, awards, and recognitions. City events. Thank you, Mayor, board. Uh, I'd like to announce uh, Richard Ross is now accepting vendor applications for the arts and crafts, crafts fair scheduled for Saturday, May 13th. He is also accepting sponsor applications for the July 3rd event. Individuals or businesses interested can reach Richard at 615-387-6140. Also want to announce the uh, Easter egg hunt uh, on April 1st. Also wanted to put out a congratulations to the Fairview High School boys basketball team. Uh, I just realized they're ranked number two in the AP D1 AA AP State poll and their district tournament starts tomorrow and uh, the boys play at 8.30 p.m. at Fairview High Gym. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7B, fiscal year 2022 financial audit presentation. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to um, ask um, Thomas Britt, and I'm sorry, Bob, I don't <laughs> recall your last name, but we uh, we work with them extensively uh, the last, I guess this is our third year in our audit, and, and they've been a joy to work with, and I just appreciate you coming up and giving, giving our report. Um, thanks, Mayor and the Board. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the financial statements for this year. 
Um, we have an unmodified opinion, otherwise known as a clean opinion. Um, there were no findings. Um, final copies of the audit have been submitted to the Tennessee Comptroller of the Treasury and Federal Audit Clearinghouse. Um, the city had a strong financial performance. It scores well on several key ratios that we track internally on your cash, debt, and expenditures. Uh, the balance sheet, also known as your statement of net position, that's on page 11 if you have the audit report in front of you. That includes your capital assets, debt, pension liabilities, among other things. 18.9 million in net position compared to 18.1 in the prior year. Approximately 6.4 million is unrestricted versus 4.5 million for the prior year. Um, your income statement on page 12, you had a 782,000 positive change in revenues over expenditures. The prior year was 132,000. The increase was driven by property taxes and sales tax revenues, which were much higher in the prior year. Um, your balance sheet on page 13, you have 20.5 million in fund balance. Approximately 5.5 million is unassigned. And on your prior year, 4.7 million in fund balance with approximately 3.7 million unassigned. Um, if we move to your income statement on page 15, you had 11.4 million positive change in revenues versus expenditures. And that's primarily driven by 9.7 million in debt issuance. Um, but a healthy amount, 1.4 million is attributed to revenues over expenditures in your normal operations um, compared to your prior year of 1.2 million in uh, positive change of revenues over expenditures. Uh, reconciliations between the net position and fund balance are on page 14 and 16 of the report. Some other items, um, there was no uniform guidance audit, also known as a single audit this year. The threshold for that is 750,000 of federal expenditures. Um, you're 99% you sure it's gonna, it's gonna happen next year with those ARP funds being expended. And um, for some other matters for the future, number one would be grant compliance on those ARP funds. I know Tom's on top of that. And um, something we, re we recommend for you is a cybersecurity policy uh, we recommend that to be in writing by July 1st of 2023. That's required by utilities, so it's not required for you, but it's just something we recommend. The comptroller has shown that's pretty important to them, and we're happy to answer any questions you have. What are the compliance deadlines for the ARP fund? Based on the size of the city, I think you have an annual reporting requirement. That I'll have to get back to you on the exact date on that. Okay. Any questions from the board? Can we get a copy of the report? Yes, sir. I thought I sent out an electronic version, but I'll I'll, I'll resend it. And I've I've got um, three. Um, I was going to say in years past I was given a binder each year, but I don't okay, know, I've been gone for a while. So. Okay, well, we've been getting three copies. I've been keeping one for me, one the city manager officer, and one I've been putting in the library. But <clears throat> I, I, we can we can figure something out. Thank you. If you have any questions, Tom can reach me. Just get a hold of me through him. We'll be fine. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 7C, representative to speak from Williams County Library. If you would just uh, state your name and um, how you represent the library. My name is Jerry Sahomsky. Uh, I've been a resident of Fairview for about six years, and I'm currently vice president of the Friends of the Fairview Library. Uh, and since July 1, I've become a member of the uh, Williamson County Library Board of Trustees. So Fairview is a, is a component of that. Uh, it, it, I ended up here because I stopped by the mayor's uh, business uh, and said, I want to heighten awareness about the library. I said, what should I do? She said, oh, three things. She said, give me the library's website so I can put it on the city's website as a link. 
The second is uh, list everything you can on Fairview then and now. And the third thing she said was come talk to the commissioners. I thought that was an awfully good idea. So here I am. What I want to do, I know uh, some of you have been here a long time. Some of you know the history of the library, but it's kind of unique. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a couple of minutes and just trace it back through uh, so that you get a, a, a sense of the magic that that library has. In January of 1964, the Fairview Home Demonstration Club decided to start a lending library. Mary Clenard, who was actually on the Library Board of Trustees, uh, had two shelves built, not bookcases, but just shelves, uh, and rounded up about 50 books that they put in the uh, Fairview Laundry Village. Uh, that opened in April. The main library uh, provided uh, some help with that by donating book pockets and date cards. But they did fundraising to buy cards, a stamp, and an ink pad. So, you know, humble beginnings, I guess, if you will. Um, in 1966, the library moved to the Lions Club building, but the usage decreased because the Lions Club wasn't open very often, so it wasn't as accessible to folks. So they moved to the City Hall meeting room the old city hall. They got metal and kitchen cabinets to store the collection. Then they got two outdated uh, volumes of the Dewey Decimal System so they could catalog uh, and began to log in book classification. In 1969, the Fairview Home Demonstration Club Library was renamed the Fairview Public Library. The Bluegrass Region Bookmobile delivered monthly loaner books from the main library to here. In 1973, the library moved to a concrete block building behind City Hall that had been uh, built supposedly as to use as a jail, but never used as such. Uh, and the first librarian, Zoe Caton, Cato, uh, was hired. 1980, after seven years in jail, the library was moved to a rehabbed TVA field office trailer that was parked in front of City Hall. In 1989, the 25th anniversary of the library, a campaign was mounted to build a new building to house the library. City and county funds were set up to go with a matching fund from the Tennessee State Library and Archive, a grant for $100,000 from the state, and a match of $106,000 from community groups uh, to build a 3,200 square foot building. They projected it to cost $204,000. You know, nowadays you couldn't get the survey done for that, but, uh, but nevertheless, that was going. The Williamson County Public Library and others, Fairview Homemakers and Friends of the Fairview Library all worked on this. I went back through a bunch of uh, newspaper articles. They had a penny drive uh, to do this. They planned to get enough pennies to, to lay from one end of Fairview to the other end of Fairview. Now, that sounds like it ought to be a lot, but I think it amounted to about $400. <laughs> Nevertheless, the, um, the, the property was built on land donated by Dr. Evangeline Bowie. And I read the article there. She's always said, just call me Van. Uh, it opened with 2,300 books and had a circulation of 14,000 books on an annual basis. Kind of amazing. An addition was later built on the back of the building to use as a conference room. I'm told that the city board of commissioners and many city committees there met uh, at the library until the new city hall was, was built and ready. So, in a nutshell, been around for 60 plus years, uh, with this uh, and is a part of the Williamson County Library system. There are five satellites uh, of that system and uh, we are second only to Nolansville in terms of volume and, and process uh, with that. So uh, it's, it's an important community resource that we like to point out. 
we have a new director for the county library in the person of Jessica Jeffers. Uh, she is a firebrand, and uh, I, I see many good things coming from that. I was fortunate enough to uh, be around and interested when they uh, had a trustee opening this past uh, spring and summer. So I've been looking forward to working with the Maine and the county and the city to promote the best library services to what I consider to be the best city in Tennessee. Um, if you thought when Lisa asked me to step up here, I was going to ask for money, I hate to disappoint you. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Don't get me wrong. I'll be back. <laughs> but at this point, uh, you know, we're finding our feet with this. What I'd like to do is introduce the director of Fairview's library, Philip McAndrew, who's going to give you uh, a real short thumbnail sketch of the programs and, and uh, things going on at our city library. Any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Philip McAndrew. I am the branch manager. Um, I've been there for coming up to nine years, and this will be very short. Uh, I just cannot emphasize enough that we are here to serve the Fairview community, and um, that is what uh, we so enjoy, and that is our mission. Uh, I could list tons of things. We have our upcoming book sale. We have our summer reading program. We have live events. We have programs going on for children and adults at all times. We have meeting space there that can be uh, reserved. But I just want to really ask everyone, um, and I know I see a lot of people here that stop by all the time, but do stop by. We're here for you. Get a library card. Check us out. Stop by and visit with me if you need to, if you have any questions. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Item number eight, staff comments and monthly reports. A, police report. Chief Humphreys. Good afternoon. Give you a brief rundown of last month. <clears throat> last month our staffing did not change. It was at 24. A little later on the slide, I'm, I'm going to talk about we've, we've increased staffing just a little bit. We're happy for that. Overtime was pretty consistent, stayed down uh, nine hours. Uh, we're staffed pretty well right now, so we're keeping that down. Training hours are down just a little bit for the month of January. Usually February to November are heaviest uh, training months, so it, it slacks off there around the holidays just a little bit. Next slide. <clears throat> Our operation report did increase. Uh, this is calls for service and self-initiated activity. This is all encompassing the, the things the officers do in calls or things that they initiate, whether it be traffic stops or anything like that, increased significantly, 1,027 from 820 the previous month. So they are busy out there. Next slide. Just a uh, little snapshot of the, the uh, law enforcement activity there. The arrest went up significantly for the month. Uh, domestics up, DUIs up, drug charges up, and theft is up. Uh, they, they've been out and been busy, been a lot of activity. And uh, citations up 91 to 148. Traffic accidents are down. Uh, the property damage down and injury down. Happy to report no f f uh, fatalities. And one thing that the, the Highway Safety Office often stresses is the more active we are in the field out there with enforcement of traffic citations, those accidents go down. And you see that's just generally reminiscent here too, that those, those numbers fall when we're out there and, and proactive. I know the citizens don't like that often, but it, it does produce safer streets for us. Next slide. A uh, little uh, public uh, PSA there. We talked about last month the fraud cases. Uh, they're, they're still coming in. Uh, every month they're starting to, to be more and more. We had six new fraud cases reported last month. Just want people, the citizens, to be aware of those text, email, phone, internet scams especially those that solicit some action from the, the citizen, whether it be go get a gift card and validate them or give me an account number or send you know, $2,000 to a, a print somewhere. Those things that, that solicit those funds from you are scams. And we would just like to urge our citizens to be, to be uh, mindful of that. If they have any doubt, call in. We'll get them hold of our uh, detectives that work that and guide them through that if they're in any doubt. 
And then, uh, like, as I talked about in the first slide there, uh, we've, got, we've hired our last two of, of the new hires that we were attempting to hire, Jake Slack and Cody Hargrove. That will put us at 26 staffing, will be fully staffed. They'll begin their training phases, and uh, we look forward to having them and getting some things done, and they are super excited to serve Fairview. They're very, very happy to be here. So, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Chief, for your report. Uh, one thing that on this scam and, and fraud thing yes, that sir. I run into absolutely yesterday was <laughs> trying to withdraw money from my ATM, from yes. my bank. Yes. And it come, card come right back out. Right. Wanted my security coat. Right. Now it's where you have to tap all this and get your stuff done. Right. Now they're requiring the security code to be typed in. Right. So I thought something was wrong with my account. So I go into the bank and they explain everything to me yesterday that it's because of the fraud and everything right. that's going yes. on. They, so they, most financial institutions have, have enacted a lot of extra safety measures to help yeah. uh, you know uh, fight that off. And you'll see that it often in inconveniences the the account holder a little bit, but yeah. they're trying everything they can. But it's just, it yeah. really is the, yeah. the, the way, the, the, the crime wave of yeah. the future. Everything is, is technological and internet based and, and identity theft and the scams. So well, I'm, just, I'm tickled to death with the way I've, when I found out because it is another way to cut, cut that out. Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. you, sir. Anything else? Chief. Yes, um, ma'am. A friend of mine was involved in an accident um, where the pole came down yes, with the lines that shut down the road. Can you explain to the community where it would be best to get correct information instead of the information that's being given on some of the websites? Uh, the Not websites. The you know city I mean. uh, has a Nixle alert. Yes. And um, we, Richard Ross managed that Nixle alert and our officers when applicable out on the street, if they're working and they get a minute, they send him that, that fresh information. He gets those Nixle alerts out. I think the Nixle is on the website. Uh, it, they can subscribe to that. It will give them uh, real-time information. Sometimes there will be a little bit of a lag time. If we're short-staffed for the night and all officers are on the scene and very busy, it takes a few minutes to get that to Richard. But we, we try to get that out, especially if there's road closures and, and it allows people to uh, take alternate routes home. I would just like to encourage everyone to subscribe to the Nixle yes. alerts instead <laughs> of putting information out before, you know. Yes, if it comes from Nixle, it's from us yes. and it is accurate information at that time. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Item 8B, fire report. Clearly, I am not Fire Chief Scott Hughes. My name is Jake, and I'm from Fairview Fire. I'm in charge of training and safety there. So uh, he has a previous engagement this evening, so I'm being filling it as his proxy. I may not have the same flair, but uh, you'll have all the facts that I can promise you that. So without further much ado, we had 95 calls for the month of January. It's down from the previous reporting period in 2022. Uh, 12 of those calls, or 12 calls occurred in January that were overlapping. That's when one crew's out on another call or on a call and another call for is transmitted or even a third or tertiary call is transmitted. So 12 times in the month of January that occurred. Five times <clears throat> the City of Fairview Fire Department assisted our mutual or automatic aid partners. <clears throat> That's when we assist either the Williamson County Rescue Squad, Williamson Fire Rescue, East Hickman, Dixon County, all of our mutual aid partners. So five times we assisted those. Uh, five incidents where fire was extinguished. It's, uh, pretty significant number for us. <clears throat> one was a building fire in the county, so one of those automatic or mutual aid numbers was a building fire in the county. We had one, had one passenger vehicle fire that was on the interstate, one transformer fire. I will clarify that we do not put out, or we do not suppress fires in electrical, energized electrical equipment. Once the energy is secured, then we put out fires. So while it does say a transformer fire, uh, I just do want to clarify that. And then two grass fires, um, pretty, pretty normal numbers for us. Uh, our average response time was four minutes and 15 seconds. That's the travel time from the fellas and the ladies turning out from the fire station and re responding to and arriving at an emergency. And then 14 minutes and seven seconds operating at that emergency. Uh, it's pretty normal numbers for us. Uh, I haven't seen much of an increase or a decrease there. We're just pretty much par for the course on those numbers. <clears throat> um, 
We had 12 interactions at two events for public outreach opportunities. That's when um, mom's at the store with their kids and we're out at the store getting stuff for dinner and they want to see the fire truck. Or it could be a scheduled event at uh, any of the area schools or events such as that. So that's, um, we just had two for the month of January. Um, we still uh, are privileged to be part of the state's smoke alarm program. So if city residents need smoke alarms in their residence, they're welcome to call the fire station. We'll schedule a time for us to come out and install those smoke alarms for them. Um, and then lastly, bullet on this one, as you can see, the same thing we say every month is you have an emergency to report. Your first call should be to call 911 and not the fire station. Uh, Keith, if you'll flip the next slide, please. <clears throat> this is just kind of a breakdown of what those 95 calls were in the month of January. As you can see, we had, it says there's six fires. We, don't, we had six reported fire incidents. Five of those were actually where a fire was suppressed. Uh, we had uh, a decrease in our emergency medical calls. We're down to 66%. We're usually we're around the 70 to 75% range. And, and then just kind of a regular breakdown of the rest of those types of calls. Um, and then just some pictures from pretty days in January. Keith, next slide. Thank you. This is our heat map for the uh, month of January. Uh, generally, as you've seen probably in, in, in months past, you see some, uh, some hot spots in and around the 96 I-40 corridor. Uh, we didn't see so much in this month. Uh, more so is in what I'm going to call Central Fairview in and around uh, the Nature Park, City Hall, and things of that nature. Keith, next slide, please. Uh, this is kind of my wrap-up slide. As, you, as I said, I'm in, part of, I'm in charge of training, so this is where I, I shine. So we had 742 hours of training in the month of January. It seems like a high number, but with our increased staffing, uh, we're able to deliver more hour-per-hour hour training. We also increased with that staffing some new hires, so we had to bring those, those new hires on board and up to our standard. Um, some of the breakdowns in that training, you can see a lot of company training. There was, two, I think it says 248 hours. That's just when the, the, the fellows and the ladies, they get together and they train as a group. Uh, some of the pictures you see, we did CPR in-service this, this month. Um, we did a lot of facility training, facility-based training. That's when we're using the training tower, the training facility. So we try to uh, emphasize the use of that a lot. And I believe that ends my presentation. Are there any questions for me? Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hall, Commissioner Hall. I was just thanking for his report. It was a good oh, report. I'm sorry. Um, I noticed um, some extra hot spots around uh, the park. Can you um, maybe let us know what those are about? Sure. I could have to do some more research to tell you specifically what those were, but generally. Um, I think they were medical calls in and around that speci uh, that specific spot. Uh, that map is a very um, blown up map, so it's not able to dive down specifically where it was. I would say in and around the uh, apartment housing complexes, in and around off the boulevard, around Tractor Supply, those uh, facilities, I think we had a higher incidence of medical calls lately in and around those facilities. Uh, but we can certainly uh, dive down deeper into uh, the specifics of why or how or what those calls were, and we can issue a further report on that. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Thank you much. Thank you. Item 8C, City Manager Report. Thank you, Mayor, Board. Um, I guess first thing I want to say is I just appreciate everybody's patience during this transition period. I, I've look up and there's things I meant to get done two and three weeks ago and they're still on my plate. So just, uh, I think we're, we're getting, we're making headway, but uh, there's, there's, uh, I do I just want to appreciate uh, uh, your patience. Um, I um, went to my first Tennessee City Managers Association meeting this Tuesday um, and I, I like going to those meetings. It's kind of a networking opportunity, and you get to you get to talk to other city managers and and around. And you know, the one thing that I always take is I always leave going. You know, <laughs> I'm glad I'm going back to Fairview. Uh, it, it, every town, every city has their issues, and I, I just I was I was glad I was facing the ones we're facing, and I just uh, had a had a little gratitude moment. Um, also, um, 
been working really hard on uh, with MTAS on uh, I've got them coming out to do the final review, but we uh, we're, I'm gonna be bringing to the board uh, an employee personnel policy uh, manual or handbook that um, that uh, updated that I feel like's been needed to be updated for a long time. And uh, I just just wanted you to be aware of that. I've been working hard on that the last uh, several weeks. Also, we've uh, started. Um, uh, well, we're, we got in pretty pretty heavily into the municipal code review. We um, I've, I've got Patrick up to speed on that. We'll be hopefully bringing that to the board for approval on um, in, in within a month, month and a half, hopefully. Um, also, uh, I know everybody is excited. I know Keith is. I might have to get him up here, but um, hopefully not. But the playground fence materials have arrived, and they're they're in the in the in the playground. I'm thinking we're if we're not already there on the uh, contractor to build it, we're close. Um, also, in public works. Leaf pickup is still continuing. They're staying very busy with all the storms and everything that's going on. And also, um, they want me to announce that chipper service will begin back on April 1st. Um, any questions? Any questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine is the consent agenda. A, minutes from Board of Commissioners meeting February 2nd, 2023. Move to approve. First, Hall, second, Johnson. Roll call, please. Commissioner Hall. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Street. Aye. Vice Mayor Butler. Aye. Mayor Anderson. Aye. Passes 5-0. Item 10, old business. There is none tonight. Item 11, new business. 11A, resolution 06-23. A resolution of the City of Fairview Board of Commissioners accepting the city's audit for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022. City Manager. Can't hit, can't hit the um, correct button, sorry. I um, hope that the board uh, just accepts the the audit. Um, they're very thorough. I really like like the firm. Um, we've we've learned a lot through working with them. You know, I've, this is the third firm I've worked it with since 2013, and and they just they're always uh, not not only are they you know auditing us, but they also give us good recommendations on how to improve. And uh, anyway, I just, um, I will, if you do not have it, I will resend. I thought I sent it, I may not have. And if, if you need a hard copy, I can get that for you as well. Thank you. Any questions from the board? I, I have one based on what you just said, Tom. Two, two questions. Number one, what did we pay them for the audit? And number two, in years past, now I'm talking previous to 2016, whomever was doing our audit gave each of the board members up here a binder, and I think that's something we could probably ask them to do when we're contracting with them. Do you know what the figure is we paid them for? If you don't, you can get it to me later. I just I can get the, the bottom line, but it's, it's just a shade under 20,000. Okay. That's all, Mayor. Move for approval. Do we have any other questions? Mayor, I'll just take, uh, thank you to the staff for, for the continued hard work, another good review and good audit, another unmodified opinion, and 
continue the good work. And as the opera funds come, it sounds like you have even more work. So thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. First, Johnson. Second, Butler. Roll call, please. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Vice Mayor Butler? Aye. Commissioner Hall? Aye. Commissioner Street? Aye. Mayor Anderson? Aye. As we voted earlier, item 11 B and C are deferred to the next meeting. So we will move to item 12, which is communication from mayor and commissioners. Commissioner Hall. Thank you, Mayor. I'd uh, just like a brief report on the GNRC meeting that I was at yesterday. And one thing that really caught my, caught my ear yesterday, this was the resolution that was approved on aging and disability services. Uh, several things that this particular uh, board of theirs, uh, the GNRC, helps the, the, the people out with all the, the problems that you have when you get my age. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, but one thing that caught my attention was uh, with the uh, fact that uh, labor is hard to come by nowadays, especially trained labor. This particular uh, division will allow for family, friends, neighbors, etc., to be paid under this program to help out with uh, family members that are, are uh, bedridden and this type thing. And uh, if I'm going to give all this information to uh, maybe put it on the website along with the director of this division. And uh, there's so many good things that you hear and uh, that we're not taking advantage of with a GNRC. So, uh, but this one here uh, really set home with me. And I'd just like for the, the citizens to know about this. Thank you. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Commissioner Fisher Street. Um, I want to thank uh, the fire and police chief for the, I mean, y'all's reports are really good and I really like to know the hot spots and stuff. Um, and so um, they're just, they're great reports, very informational. Um, I want to thank everyone who came out tonight um, because you're the voice. That's what we want to hear. And we need more. We need to hear more of you. Um, and I'm, I'm ready to start making a difference. So I just, I want a fair view to be great and I want it to be what the people want. And I'm just ready to get started with y'all. So thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna show my age here and let all our friends from the library know that I remember going to the library at the old city hall that was in the trailer. My mother and my grandmother would take me there uh, when I was young to, to check out books. So you've, every, everything I heard was an accurate account. Thank you. Vice Mayor Butler. Thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, the 21st, the Williams County Schools is having a strategic meeting for for the schools at the rec center the 28th we have the parks operation plan meeting here both like you mentioned earlier both teams play in the district tournament this weekend our number two boys team and let's see congrats to jake and cody the new officers and thank you to the library for the history lesson tonight i really enjoyed that thank you guys thank you mayor thank you I would uh, like to say welcome to Jake Slack and Car Cody Hargrove to the um, police department. I look forward to meeting you guys. And um, congratulations to our basketball team. I mean, they are on fire. D they've done a great job this year. I think they've only lost just a few games. And um, I, I look forward to going out there tomorrow night and supporting them. So I hope we all, you know, can can support our team. This is a, you know, they've really done a great job this year. Um, I'd like to uh, tell Commissioner Hall, thank you for um, attending the GNRC meetings. They're very important. We need to 
stay in touch with um, groups like that so that we can, you know, get the funding and find out about things like that that we need. Also, I have a question about that um, of Mr. Carter. Um, is that um, if more than one commissioner went to that meeting, is that appropriate? I don't, is it a public meeting? If it's a public meeting, any number of commissioners could go. It is a public meeting. There's, there's no problem being together in, in, a, in the public meeting, and certainly if you're just attending the meeting to observe it, there's, there's no problem. The problem only comes when there's discussion about city business that's not on, that's not in the public purview, so. In, okay. in, a, in a smallish town, you'd have a hard time avoiding each other all the time if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, so. Thank you. The county actually had three members there yesterday. I'm glad it has that support. Sometimes there is city business on those agendas, on projects that they're going to do in our city, but it's nothing this board would be voting on at that event. I just would like to attend some of those in the future. And um, my daughter who manages my shop, she doesn't know this, but I'm going to ask her to uh, possibly flip-flop with me because she's usually off on Wednesday, but that's when those meetings are, so we'll work that out. Um, okay, great news about the fence pickets. I'm so excited about those, uh, us finding an installer to get those installed. And, um, you know, we've just had a lot of support um, with people purchasing those. I, I do want to announce that we are starting something um, next meeting. Um, I would like to hear from as many of our community as possible. We will still adhere to the three minutes, but we will have an unlimited amount of speakers uh, during citizens' comments. So anyone who would like to come speak about anything that um, they would like to the board to hear and maybe help them with, um, I, I encourage them to come speak during citizens' comments, which will be three minutes, but unlimited from here moving forward. And I think my, my recommendation on that would be to have where we have citizens' comments, we actually break that into two, two items. One will be uh, uh, non-agenda items, another one will be agenda items. The, the, they can still sign up as they've always signed up and they're limited to three minutes. Obviously, if the comments are just repetitive or the same, then the chair can mention that and, um, and hopefully limit repetitive type comments. But I think uh, Fairview really wants to uh, hear from the public and, and understand that the public has a voice and it's their city. And I think not limiting it to five people sends that message loud and clear. Thank you. And so I applaud the, this board for doing that. Mr. Darty, could you make sure that um, the sign-up sheet reflects that, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Um, I would like to also, I spoke about this a little bit last meeting, but I need to know how we need to structure this. I'm looking to every month that has a fifth Thursday having some sort of town hall. I know that it's a little frustrating when, you know, people come to our board meetings and we can't dialogue with them. And so that, I, I just think that if we have a fifth Thursday town hall meeting, then we could dialogue and answer some of the questions that the community might have. So Mr. Carter, could you um, just tell us how that would need to be structured? I think it would be like any other public meeting. It would just be styled as a town hall. So we would advertise the meeting as a public meeting. Uh, the agenda would be town hall. And so I think at that point you'd have uh, citizens comments, so to speak, but there would be rebuttal from, from the board. And would that be for the board of commissioners, a board of commissioners? Town yes, hall board meeting? of commissioners. Mm -hmm. So I, I think as long as it was advertised as a town hall. Uh, Although I would encourage anyone from the Planning Commission who could be here that might be able to uh, give some information that 
might need to support us with an answer that we would give to make sure it's uh, accurate. I, I think it would just be advertised as a, a Board of Commissioners town hall meeting. Uh, obviously, Mr. Doherty would make sure that the various city officials or appoint, appointed officials uh, were invited to the meeting, um, and then it could be an open dialogue. I think that would be that would be fine with rebuttal to the citizens. I think would, that's what you're getting at. Typically, during citizens' comments, there's no rebuttal. The citizen gets up, reads their comment, or, or speaks their comment, and the board listens, but there shouldn't be any back and forth during a regular meeting or a voting meeting. But if it's styled as a town hall and advertised as a town hall, I think that would be permissible. And would, um, how many board members would need to attend? Because I, I'm, I don't wanna make it so rigid that like if someone had, you know, something that they needed, you know, like a conflict that night, um, how many board members would need to be here? You're not, you're not voting. So I don't think there's a, a, I don't think you need a quorum to vote. We just, one member would have to Well, and I, meeting. yeah, I'm just, I just wanted the question so that we would answer it so we would know. I mean, pr preferably you'd have as, as many BOC members as, you, as, as, as possible, but I don't think you'd, the, the quorum is really for voting purposes. Obviously work meetings don't go well if you have one or two members because you're, you're wasting your time because the person is going to come uninformed to the voting meeting. Uh, but I, I think as long as you had one member here uh, and there's no voting taking place, and uh, then, I think you, then I think you could have a, a town hall meeting in that, in that way. With one, with at least one member, I think Commissioner uh, Johnson is correct. And Mr. Darty, we could uh, post that on the website so the the community will know when that town hall or when those town halls, uh, the dates for those each year. Definitely, and also in the paper. Yes. Yeah, it should be advertised just like one of your regular right. meetings, just as a town hall, and and obviously the website's good, and however else the city post those things. I don't know if they post the meeting agenda on the door or, but how, whatever the regular advertising is for uh, our meetings, that's how the town hall should be done as well. Okay, so I would like to just encourage the community. Um, it will be posted and just know that uh, we will start with each fifth, fifth Thursday, each month that has a fifth Thursday, it will be a town hall where we can hear from you and we can actually have dialogue to be able to answer some of those questions. Yes. I would also like to see the Board of Zoning, Zoning Appeals be invited at that meeting also. Yes, any, any of the boards who would like to be at these meetings are welcome to come and join us. I encourage that. Let's see. Wayne can speak to the fact that we had them for years in, in the past. So. It's just a little frustrating when, I don't know stopped, but. right, I don't either. I'm not sure because we had them when I was on the planning commission. Um, it's just a, a way for us to be able to dialogue where these meetings are not set up for dialogue. We can listen, but we can't answer the questions. So, okay. And thank you for the history of the library. I just encourage the community to um, visit and get their library card and bring their children because I think that's a wonderful resource for us. Thank you for um, the fire, um, Mr. Warren, uh, speaking about um, you know what's going on as far as uh, fire safety and training. I appreciate that. Thank you to staff and as usual, I always like to say, let's keep Fairview beautiful and help pick up trash. We have some people in our community who do that on a regular basis, and I want to say thank you to them. And I um, will accept a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Thank you.